name is a completely paradoxical. When you say, the reason we cannot say UK Vavke, you cannot pronounce it, the deepest reason is because the name is paradoxical. That is the name of all opposites that coexist. That, let me try to explain this. First of all, miracles. Until the time that name was revealed, miracles were setting aside of nature, but not conceptually impossible. For example, Avram Avinu, Abraham was thrown into a fire and he did not burn. That's pretty impressive, but it's not conceptually impossible. Is, is this clear? Somebody could be in a fire and not burn. There are always that could happen. You could be smeared with some kind of asbestos. I don't know. You could. But from the Exodus, miracles began to occur that are conceptually impossible. Meaning, as soon as that name becomes manifest, the miracles become things where two things coexist. For example, if you want to find beautiful expressions of this, the Svasemes actually documents them in his pieces on Pesach. Example number one. When the Nile turned to blood, the Medrash says, it was blood for the Egyptians and water for us. At the same time. You see, the children are taught like this. The children are taught, well, when the Jew took the glass of water, it was water. The Egyptian grabbed it and it became blood. The Jew took it back and it became water. So the Egyptian tried to drink the same cup at the same time. In his mouth it was blood. In the, that's not what it means. It does not mean that. It means that it was the same substance was water for us and blood for them. How is that possible? It's not, but it happened. We move into a zone where miracles, as Fasaba says, for example, when they walked through the sea, when the sea split, the Jewish people walked through the sea on dry land, under water. The Torah says twice, they walked in the midst of the ocean on dry land. We translate it where the ocean was, and it's not, but it doesn't say that. The Swasema says they walked through the water. The Medrash says that what saved us drowned the Egyptians. At one and the same moment, the dry land for us was a drowning for them. That's conceptually impossible. The hail fell with fire inside. So the kids sort of picture it like a big ball of hail, with sort of space in the middle. And inside, it does not mean that. It means it was fire and ice at the same time. When the Mishkan was finally built, the Jewish people, the whole process is completed, they build the Mishkan. And in the, in the Kurdish Kadoshim, in the in, in a sanctum of the Mishkan, and the Beis Mikdash later, they put the Oran. And the Gemara says it occupied no space. Ha'aron eno minamide, occupies, occupies no space. That means, you measure from wall to wall, you got a certain measurement. You measure from wall to Oran, same measurement. That is not possible. It didn't shrink. If the Oran shrank, it would be possible. The, the Kurdish Kedoshim did not expand. If it did, it would be possible. It has certain measurements. But it occupied. The reason, of course, is because this is the center of space. Where space comes into being, the rules don't apply. <coughs> we moved into a world then. Not where nature was set aside. But where not, nature long, no longer makes any sense. In other words, Einod Mulvodeh Hashem is... The name Yudke Vavke is the name of paradoxical opposites. For example, what do we say about that name? We say Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. What does Echad mean? Echad doesn't mean there's one God and not two or three or four. We credit a ten-year-old with understanding that. We mean one to the extent that you aren't even here. The meditation, when you say the word Echad, when you say the word Echad, you should disappear. You should melt into a oneness. That's why the Gemara says you shouldn't say the word too long. You might forget to come down. Echad means that the paradoxical nature of that word is Hashem is one and is the source of many. Is that possible? No. But it happens to be true. That name is also the name that names the famous problem of Yudhi and Bakir. Hashem knows before it what's going to be and you have free will anyway. Is that possible? No. The Ramam says it's not possible. Because if He knows before and what you'll do tomorrow, there's no other option. And yet He knows and you have free will. Another example. It's the name of Din and Rachamim combined. Din and Rachamim combined. You know that, you know, every name of Hashem denotes a different Midah. Elohim means Midas Adin, etc. UK Vavke, people think it means Midas Rachamim. It's not one Midah, it's the name of all Midas. What is Rachamim? Rachamim, kindness or mercy, means a combination of right and left hand sides. Right? It means, that name means. <coughs> The Medrash says this, Hashem wanted to create the world with Din, 
exact din so that we could not survive with 100% strictness and therefore Amad Vashitav Imo Mirisarachami Hashem arose and combined mercy and kindness into the din you can't do that you can't have approximate exactness din means it's exact Rachami means it's not exact you can't put those two together you can move away din and replace it with Rachami but you can't mix inexactness with exactness but he did that name is the name of paradoxical opposites. By the way, again, in, w in the West, where we scientifically train, it's hard for us to... People with Eastern backgrounds find it much easier to deal with paradox. Be that as it may. But we moved into a world... This is the important thing to grasp, is that before the exodus from Egypt, we lived in a world where Hashem set aside nature occasionally when it was necessary. But our coming into being as a people took place in a place of miracles in a completely different sense. Not simply that nature stops operating, or its rules change, or people are put into a fire and they don't burn. But nature demonstrates that it comes from a place where all is one, where the things, the rules don't make any sense at all. That is a making contact with Hashem Himself, UK Bavke, right? And that is, that, is the, that is the essential feature. When we tell the story of the Exodus to the children, only if it's a very small child do you tell him we were slaves and we were freed. We started in a place called Egypt and we left. That's not the important part of the story. That's not the important part. Every nation has a story like that. Right? They started in one place, you people, Americans. You started off as British. You moved here, you didn't like the British, you broke away. South Africa also, it wasn't not like the British. And we, you know, trekked someplace else. That's not important. What's important is that we took off. We left the natural world and we transcended the supernatural world. That's what made us unique. The Egyptians also experienced the miracle. The Torah says at least five times. These miracles will occur that Pharaoh and the Egyptians will know who I am. And they got the message. But they didn't get the higher message. The Egyptian couldn't understand that when he exists in darkness, his darkness is light for us. That's a complete paradoxical... We move into the world of the impossible. Right? And that is, that is how the Jewish people manifest.